Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at number 59 on the top 100 NFL's greatest players of all time. Mike Ditka. Let's get into it. The quicker you here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Oh. Oh, Mike. Tight ends, when I came into the game, were kind of an extension of the offensive tackle. They blocked most of the time. You know, I caught 12 passes my senior year in college. I would have played outside linebacker and any other team that would have drafted me. George Callis had the vision to understand what a tight end could do. If he could get down the field, he would change the way he played defense. He would open up the wide receivers. First year in pro ball, 12 touchdowns. It was a whole different concept. I think he was really at the forefront of, or right there, was with the, really the great tight ends in the NFL. When did he play? Must have been the 50s. The former American football player played in the 60s, throughout the whole 60s. Chicago Bears from 61 to 66, Eagles from 67 to 68, and Dallas Cowboys from 69 to 72. And I think I've actually seen him talk on one of these videos, I'm pretty sure. He reminds me of Stephen Baldwin, <laughs> or Alec Baldwin, for some reason. Anyway, let's get into it. Oh, I want to see that run. Great tight ends in the NFL. Beats one. Beats a second. Bang with the third. Fuck. S still going. What a beast! Ditka was just a tough son of a gun. I mean, he seemed like he was made for the Bears. <laughs> he was one tough okay. son of a gun. was supposed to be. You take no prisoners. He had some good feet, too. If you hit the guy more often than he hits you, and you hit him harder than he hits you. Come on, guys, take him down! Man, you don't want to waste athletic attributes like that in the 60s to block people all the time, dear. Get that guy down the field, get the ball in his hands, and have him make people miss. Or just chuck them up like he did. But he's only 6'1". He's not huge. No one wanted to mess with our Mike. I remember up in Cleveland where... Uh... Was he 6'1"? Let me see. 6'3", sorry. The other guy was 6'1". I mean, he got kind of formed, dirty shot and a couple of people hit him, knocked him over, and, uh, and he, uh, he got up, he didn't appreciate the dirty shot, threw the ball on the ground, clenched his fist, turned around, punched this guy right through the face mask, and, and, and nobody went after him after that. Mike Ditka's disregard for his body came with a price. After six years with the Bears and two with the Eagles, Iron Mike was headed for the scrap heap. Fuck, man, Mike look at that! His body came with a price. Oh! Six year Ditka's disregard for his body. Someone from one from behind, one from the front, and then a pole as well. Both After six wow. years with the Bears and two with the Eagles, Iron Mike was headed for the scrap heap. But Tom Landry still saw value in the hard scrabbled veteran. Tom Landry always said one of the best things that happened to us was being able to get Mike Ditka. We really needed that that kind of leadership that Dick had brought. Dallas was one of the most talented teams in the league, but every time the Cowboys were on the brink of a championship, they let the title slip away. 71 season, we were expected to do a whole lot that year, and we got off to that, that shaky start being 4-3, and three, and it was kind of an ugly 4-3. and three. So to get focused again and get back on track, we had a team meeting. Mike got up and he just talked about having the right people in the right place is important, but having the right people in the right places working together, you know, miracles happen. So people trusted him and players respected him because he really walked the talk. It wasn't an accident. All of a sudden, these same human beings, we, we won 10 games in a row after that. The Cowboys rolled to Super Bowl. It's funny, isn't it? In which it's funny. Just saying a few words like that, making the team see the game in a different perspective and have trust with their teammates. Man, trust, real trust between your teammates can, can work wonders. A champion team will always beat a team of champions. Remember that. 
redeem a franchise tormented by past playoff failures. Early in the game, we broke down, and we're on the five-yard line. We had a play-action pass that Dwayne Thomas did a swing, and Mike ran to the corner. I was still a little nervous. Uh, I didn't look to Mike. I just threw the ball out to Dwayne, and he got hit. And we kicked the field goal, and we're coming off the field, and Dick is just chewing me out. Yeah, I was wide open. Why did you throw me the ball? And a few other things he said. <laughs> that, uh, something. Oh, geez, you know. Later <laughs> on in the game, I, I threw him a pass over the middle, and he dropped it. And I said, hey, nice catch, Mike. And he knew why I said that, because I would never say that. But after he chewed the heck out of me, I was, you know, I'm pretty competitive, too. And <laughs> he didn't give it back to him. Mike, I wanted to get him to fight with him. <laughs> and so we kind of, we bonded again. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I like hearing that. By catching the touchdown pass that secured the Cowboys' first championship. A fitting conclusion to a season he helped save. I think that winning that 71 Super Bowl and, and getting that momentum to become a team that could win the, the big game and win when it counted, Mike was a big part of that. We had a very successful 70s as far as Super Bowls. Mike was just instrumental in getting us to the point of being a Dallas team that wasn't going to back down to anybody. Wow. Well, that's pretty big. He set up the dynasty that was the Dallas Cowboys in the 70s. Or was it the 80s? I can't remember. Let's have a look here. Chicago Bears, Eagles, so played for the Cowboys from 69 to 72. And won a Super Bowl in 71. Okay. And won an NFL championship in 63 with the Bears. He went pick number five in the first round of the NFL draft and he went pick number eight in the first round of the AFL draft and he chose the NFL because the Bears drafted him in the NFL draft the Oilers drafted him in the AFL draft he signed with the Bears and his presence was immediately felt in his first season he had 58 receptions including a new dim introducing a new dimension to a tight end position that had previously been dedicated to blocking as we heard he also scored 12 receiving touchdowns, which was the most by a Bears rookie. Yeah, that would have been an awesome season. Hall of Fame. In 1988, his fearsome blocking and 427 career receptions for 5,812 yards and 43 touchdowns earned him the honor of being the first tight end ever inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Huh. He also scored two touchdowns on offensive fumble recoveries, tying seven other players for the most in NFL history. I guess scoring a touchdown on an offensive fumble recovery wouldn't, wouldn't happen very often. So your player has to drop it, and then someone from your own team has to pick it up and continue and score a touchdown. I guess it would be the defensive player that would normally pick up a fumble, right? Or if it was the offensive player, he probably wouldn't be getting a touchdown. All right. In 1999, 10 years before the series was made, he was ranked number 90 on the Sporting News list of 100, 100 greatest football players. Well, Mike, you've improved by 31 positions. Crazy. All right, guys. Well, that was that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you in the next one. We've got number 58, Steve Van Buren. Sounds... Sounds like Armin Van Buren to me, but he's a DJ, not a football player. Anyways guys, see you in the next one.